know that around 10% of the PMP exam questions are related to math formulas? In order to pass the PMP exam in your first attempt, you must guarantee to answer PMP formula-related questions correctly. What are the PMP formulas and earned value formulas for the PMP exam? We use PMP formulas in various project planning activities. These include, but are not limited to, resource management, cost management, and schedule estimation. We also use them in risk estimation activities like EMV or earned value management, in addition to monitor and control activities. The percentage of questions which are based on PMP formulas range from 5% to 10%. This means that there are around 10 to 20 questions, so it seems like a pretty small portion, right? Then you need to rethink your exam strategy. Although the number seems small, PMP formulas are quick wins, because PMP formula-based questions vary from direct to complex. So what are the 15 PMP formulas you must know? We can categorize the PMP formulas under two headings. A. Critical Path Method or CPM-related PMP formulas and B. Earned Value Management or EVM PMP formulas. Let's go over them one by one and learn the details of each PMP formula. A. The Critical Path Method or CPM-related PMP formulas. The first set of PMP formulas that we will provide are related to the Critical Path Method. PMP formula number one, PERT distribution. There are two types of this PERT distribution, triangular and beta. PERT triangular distribution. It's one of the most important PMP formulas, and we use it to calculate duration, cost, and resource estimates. To calculate estimated activity duration, or EAD, you need to determine the activity optimistic, or O, most likely, or M, and pessimistic, or P, estimates first. Then you can use the PERT triangular distribution to estimate the activity duration. Accordingly, the PMP formula for the PERT triangular distribution is as follows. EAD equals the sum of O and M and P, all divided by 3. PERT beta distribution. It's one of the most important PMP formulas, and we use it to calculate duration, cost, and resource estimates. Similar to the previous formula, to calculate EAD, you need to determine activities O, M, and P estimates first. Then you can use the PERT beta distribution to estimate the activity duration. Accordingly, the formula for the PERT beta distribution is as follows. EAD equals the sum of O plus 4M plus P, all divided by 6. Standard deviation, or SD, of an activity. Standard deviation, or SD, measures the variation from average. As a result, a low value of SD indicates that the data points are close to the average. On the other hand, a high value of SD indicates the spread of data points over a large range. Accordingly, the formula for standard deviation is as follows. SD equals P minus O, and the result of which is then divided by 6. The variance of an activity. We use this formula result as an indicator to activity risk level, which prompts the course of action to take. Activity variance calculation involves taking the square of activity standard deviation. So the variance is the result of P minus O all divided by 6 and then to the power of 2. The range of an activity duration. The range of an activity duration serves the same purpose of standard deviation or SD and variance. To calculate the end of the range, you add the standard deviation to the estimated activity duration. On the other hand, to calculate the start of the range, you subtract the duration standard deviation from the estimated activity. Accordingly, the formula for range of an activity duration is as follows. The range of an activity duration equals EAD plus or minus SD. PMP formulas number two, float or slack formulas. Float or slack of an activity determines how long an activity can be delayed without affecting the project end date. Accordingly, if an activity is on the critical path, the float or slack of that activity will be zero. In order to calculate an activity float, first we determine late start or LS 
and early start or ES values of the activity. Alternatively, we may use late finish or LF and early finish or EF values. Accordingly, the formula for total float is as follows. Total float equals late start minus early start, and the total float equals late finish minus early finish. B. Earned Value Management or EVM PMP formulas. To understand PMP formulas related to earned value management, you need to know the following abbreviations. Earned value equals EV. Planned value equals PV. Actual cost equals AC. Cost variance equals CV. Schedule variance is SV. Cost performance index is CPI. Schedule performance index is SPI. Budget at completion is BAC. Estimate to complete equals ETC. Estimate at completion equals EAC. Variance at completion equals VAC. And to complete performance index equals TCPI. PMP formulas number three, cost variance or CV. Cost variance represents the amount of budget deficit or surplus at a given point in time. Basically, we express it as the difference between earned value and the actual cost. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. CV equals EV minus AC. PMP formulas number four, schedule variance or SV. Schedule variance's aim is to measure schedule performance through the difference between the earned value and the planned value. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. SV equals EV minus PV. PMP formulas number five, cost performance index or CPI. One of the most common PMP formulas for control cost is CPI. It measures the cost efficiency of budgeted resources, expressed as a ratio of earned value to actual cost. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. CPI equals EV divided by AC. PMP formulas number six, Schedule Performance Index, or SPI. The Schedule Performance Index, or SPI, is a measure of schedule efficiency. It represents the ratio of earned value to planned value. It's one of the most common PMP formulas for control schedule. Its aim is to measure how efficiently the project team is accomplishing the work. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. SPI equals EV divided by PV. PMP formulas number seven, budget at completion or BAC. We determine BAC during the cost management activities, more specifically in determine budget process of a project. BAC includes contingency reserves for activities and defines how much money will be spent during the project in total. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. Total budget equals total activity cost estimates plus total contingency cost reserves. PMP formulas number eight, estimate to complete or ETC. Estimate to complete, or ETC, represents the expected cost to finish all the remaining project work. ETC can be determined by re-estimation of the remaining works in a project. In this case, its formula is as follows. ETC equals re-estimation of remaining works. Also, we can calculate it by subtracting the actual cost, or AC, of the accomplished activities from EAC. Assuming the work is proceeding as planned, we can calculate it using this formula. ETC equals EAC minus AC. PMP formula number nine, estimate at completion or EAC. The expected total cost of completing all work expressed as the sum of the actual cost to date and the estimated sum to complete the project. It is one of the most common PMP formulas. We can find the EAC value by three different approaches using EV, SPI, and CPI values. Approach one, it assumes that all future ETC work will be accomplished at the budgeted rate. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. EAC equals AC plus the result of BAC minus EV. Alternatively, approach two, it assumes that we expect the achieved cost performance till now will continue in the future. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. 
EAC equals BAC divided by CPI. On the other hand, approach number three, it assumes that we will perform ETC work at an efficiency rate that considers both the cost and schedule performance indices. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. The result of BAC minus EV divided by the result of CPI times SPI, all plus AC. PMP formulas number 10, variance at completion or VAC. Variance at completion is a projection of the amount of the budget deficit or surplus. It represents the difference between the budget at completion and the estimate at completion. Accordingly, its formula is as follows. VAC equals BAC minus EAC. PMP formulas number 11, two complete performance index or TCPI. TCPI is a measure of the cost performance in order to achieve meeting a specified management goal with the remaining resources. It represents the ratio of the cost to finish the outstanding work to the budget available. There are two approaches to calculate TCPI. Firstly, if there isn't a new EAC value, we use the first approach. If there is an EAC value, then we use the second approach. Approach number one, TCPI equals the result of BAC minus EV divided by the result of BAC minus AC. And approach number two, TCPI equals the result of BAC minus EV divided by the result of EAC minus AC. PMP formulas number 12, present value formula. One of the PMP formulas which focuses on the time value of money and the value of a future cash flow is less today than its amount in the future. It is used in the project selection process. We calculate this through present value or the PV formula. In order to understand the formula, you need to know the following abbreviations of terms. Present value is PV, future value is FV, interest rate is R, and number of periods is N. Thus the formula is PV equals the result of 1 plus R all to the power of N, and then you take FV and divide it by that result. PMP formulas number 13. Number of Communication Channels Formula We use this formula to decide on the complexity of project communication. In other words, if there are n stakeholders in an environment, the following formula will give the total number of communication channels between stakeholders in this environment. Therefore, the number of communication channels equals the result of n minus 1 all divided by 2, and then the result of that multiplied by n. PMP formulas number 14, expected monetary value. We usually use it in risk quantitative analysis to measure EMV of an opportunity or threat. We calculate it by the following formula. EMV equals probability multiplied by impact. And PMP formulas number 15, point of total assumption or PTA. PTA is applicable only in Fixed Price Incentive Fee, or FPIF, contracts. Costs above the PTA level are considered to be due to mismanagement. PTA equals the result of ceiling price minus target price, all divided by the buyer's sharing ratio, and then the result of that, all plus the target cost. You can visit the description area of this video to find more details about the PMP formulas. I wish you success in your PMP journey.